Well, welcome to the second module in uh, the Hidden Markov Model series. And this one I just want to uh, motivate uh, the difference between uh, Hidden Markov Models and Ngram Models. So if you look at Ngram Models, let's just take a Bigram Model f to keep things simple and you have an input sentence, British left waffles on Falkland Islands, you would um, score or give a probability to this sentence using a bigram model in this way. So you would first um, compute the probability of British and then the second word left given British and so on. So that's the standard sort of Markov assumption that we only look at a finite history, in this case the previous word. If you look at a HMM, uh, it generates the same sequence of words in a very different way. So let's for s simplicity just take one state sequence. So this is one possible state sequence. And if you fix this state sequence, then the probability that's assigned to this sentence by an HMM looks like this. So you can see it looks quite different from an engram model, but the more in the the interesting differences are that when you generate the word British, here is just generated uh, because it's the first word, here is generated from the noun state. So you have to first go to a noun state and then generate the word British. And the other thing is how it models context. So here you have the context of a word left given the previous word British. Instead, we have this more abstract probability of a noun following a noun, and then we can generate the left given noun. So you can see that it the HMM mediates the generation of the words from uh, using these states. So Ngram model is called a Markov model. Uh, it's sometimes also called a Markov chain. And the hidden Markov model idea is to add a notion of this hidden state. So n-grams directly model the probability of a sequence of observations. So each word is uh, generated given some previous word or words. And HMMs use a more abstract state representation. So it's always a state given a previous state, and then you generate a word given the current state. So let's just examine how to look at an n-gram model in this notion of a probabilistic finite state machine. And uh, that gives another way to compare with HMM. So let's take a abstract sim observation sequence just having these symbols A's and B's. So B, A, B, A, A is the observation sequence. So remember that this means that O1 is B, O2 is A, and so on. Um, and you can compute this using a bigram model, and we've just seen how to do that. And you can write it down as a finite state, a probabilistic finite state machine, but of course without any hidden state. So we call it a Markov chain. And that's what it looks like. So the states are the actual words in the observation sequence, or the, sorry, the observations in the observation sequence are the states. And then the transitions are the probabilities. So in this case, you have uh, the probability of having an A follow a B is just uh, put on the arc from state B to state A. So you can see an analogy with hidden Markov models here because um, in this case, the states are actually observed and not hidden. So what happens in a trigram model? So a trigram model actually has a, a larger context, right? It has, uh, first you generate the first two letters B, A, and then you generate B given the previous two. So the reason why we call it a trigram is because you have a B given the previous two uh, observations, B and A. So how do we represent this? as a Markov chain? Well, the states become more complicated. So instead of having one observation per state, now we have pairs of observations. And so you can see that the history, uh, so basically what you're doing is this BA is mapped to this state. So every time you have 
um, uh, generating a new symbol B given a previous history that history is represented as a state here so um, so you can see that uh, I can if I started with BA then I wanted to generate a B then the history for the next symbol is going to be AB so you have to uh, examine this and convince yourself that that's true and once you do that you know that you can go from BA to a state AB and then to the next state and so on so in this case if you look at um, the how this Markov chain works we start off with BA and we go to the, you generate the next symbol which is B given BA and now we slide the window over so that the right history is available for the next symbol so the next symbol is going to be A and that A is uh, going to be conditional on AB so basically we've gone to state AB so that we can now generate uh, the next symbol A so we do that um, using P of A given AB and now we're back to BA because it's the same the history is now BA and then we generate the last symbol A and we end up in this state AA so if there was a subsequent symbol we could generate that but now that's the end of the sequence so we stop here so given an observation sequence uh, nth order Markov chain or Engram model computes this probability it's just the probability of the sequence um, you know using the Markov assumption and the HMM actually computes this probability there's a sequence of states associated with each observation and this state sequence is hidden so the main difference between HMM and Engram model is this extra bit here uh, which the HMM uses uh, to generate the observation sequence. The two important properties of HMMs, one is the Markov assumption that you only uh, pay attention to the previous state and that's similar to the Ngram model. Another important uh, property uh, also shared with the Ngram model is this notion of a stationary distribution. It's a term from statistics but all that means is if you see a certain transition at one point in the string, so let's say you have a adjective given noun, and this is for the observation symbol 2. And then you go ahead in the string, and then later on you get an adjective given noun, and this is in O, I don't know, 20. So there's um, 18 symbols down, you get a another observation and you want to use this probability again the transition probability well this probability has to be exactly the same as this one that's what the stationary distribution says so you can't change the transition based on where you are in the sequence and that's a that's a useful simplification and a useful property and that's our comparison of n-grams versus HMMs